Uh, greetings and welcome to our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, an integrative holistic facility where we do we treat individuals. We do not treat diagnoses, and every week we attempt to send out some type of a message that people can incorporate into their lives, actually incorporate into their lives, not just the lecture, not just listening. I'm Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist here at Seclair, and today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my left would be. Hi, I'm Maria. I'm a PA student from St. Francis University. And on my right would be... I'm Becca, and I'm a PA student from Seton Hill University. Well, certainly. So when individuals come to our facility, Becca, they, uh, they generally are not riding unicorns? No. And rainbows and butterflies are not blowing out of their ears? No. Okay. So, what are people what are people looking for when they come to can they come to this facility, Maria? Um, usually, someone to talk to and to get some help and learn ways to help themselves. Absolutely, learn ways to help themselves. Perhaps they're looking for a change in their thoughts and a change in their actions. Mm-hmm. Right. So, what happens is when perhaps you're feeling a bit disconnected from life. Perhaps you're going through life with a bit of awkwardness. Perhaps there's some guilt and shame associated with either your past or how you're behaving in the present. Well, today we're going to be discussing a particular way, starting a series on how to have that change in your thoughts and a change in your actions, and I'm referring to 12-step recovery. I am from the 12-step recovery world, and however, I'm adding this disclaimer that I even either represent nor speak for any 12-step group. Uh, so you just attended a 12-step meeting, mm -hmm. I understand. Mm -hmm. And Becca, you also, could you share with me a little bit about what you found there? Um, we went to our first 12-step on Friday and um, everybody there was really friendly and inviting and we got to um, introduce ourselves and participate and um, really figure out what goes on at the AA meetings. And Maria? Mm -hmm. Yes, it was a really open atmosphere and no one judged each other, so it was a good way for people to facilitate what they were thinking in their past experiences. So, if a donkey's in a ditch, a donkey's in a ditch, so, and we get a group of people around there, would it help to write a thesis or do a research project on how that donkey got in the ditch? No. What would, what would, be, what would be the purpose? The purpose would be to get them out of the ditch. The hole. purpose would be to get the donkey out of the ditch. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So I'm not referring to anyone out there as a donkey. However, it's the action and effort that you take incorporate in your life that make things happen. Have you ever lived your life on wishes and hopes? Mm, Give yeah. a wish and hope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you ever wait for something? Just wait for something to happen, Becca? I know that sometimes. Cool. Yeah, sure. Many people do. Well, I haven't found Aladdin's lamp yet. <laughs> I haven't got three wishes. So the idea is it's the action and effort that, that incorporate in your life. So let's say, let's take, uh, let's take step one, step one in 12-step recovery, uh, that we admitted that we're powerless, and in this case we'll use a, a generic term, over our addiction and in our lives become unmanageable. However, when most people think of their lives as unmanageable, Perhaps they think of the car wrecks, they think of the ruined relationships, they think of the finances, they think of the employment, they think of the health problems, they think of the legal issues. Do they not? Mm -hmm. yes. If you you consider your life unmanageable, right? Yeah. So you've we've, you've probably sat with me, both of you, maybe at some point, where I ask people to look in the mirror and tell me what they see. And tell me what they see. So quite often, what do people say when they're looking in that mirror in their time of troubles? Just vague descriptions and they usually don't like what they see in the mirror. Right, and quite often, Maria, what happens is we avoid looking in the mirror. And that's the unmanageability, the unmanageability of addicted. We're all addicted to something. We're all in recovery from something. The unmanageability of, of uh, step one is losing who you are, is losing who you are. And that's, and that's truly what happens is we lost our way and we don't know who we are, which when most people come to uh, recovery services because they have relationship issues. They're their parents, their, their partner, their employer, their friends, their children, whoever are dissatisfied with the way that they're living and they're having interpersonal relationship issues. However, in 12-step recovery, the idea is to begin that relationship with yourself, Maria, to begin it with yourself. So we admit we're powerless, okay? So what does that, what does that mean to you, Becca? Um, accepting that you can't do anything more to help yourself and that you need help. 
And you? It kind of means that you're um, you're not in control whenever whatever is controlling you is still there. So if they have an addiction, that then that addiction has the power over you. Correct. So admitting that we're powerless is not defeat. It is not surrender. Mm -hmm. It is merely acceptance, which corresponds to the modality that we do here at Seclair, dialectical behavioral therapy, where we ask people to practice radical acceptance. And radical acceptance, Maria, is accepting that the tire's flat on your car. Okay, you're not going to burn the car down or you're not going to hitchhike to the dealership and get another vehicle, right? And that's quite often what we what we do with our with our addictions. We try to we try to move away from them. We try to avoid them. Uh, one of the commonalities among individuals in addiction, Maria, is that we're artful dodgers. We have we have great great defensive skills. Okay, we we were avoidance avoidance denial one of them, and uh, on the contrary. Uh, Denial is not a river in Egypt, okay? Mm -hmm. It's it's denying that you have a problem, okay? I've heard a, uh, I heard a joke once that a person said, I can't be an alcoholic, I've never been to a meeting. So <laughs> <laughs> so the idea here is, is that we admit it, okay? And that's not defeat, it's not failure, it's merely accepting the fact that by myself, this particular issue in front of me is larger than I can deal with at the moment. Okay, so here we come back to dialectical behavioral therapy. What's dialectical? It's two supposed opposites, is it not? Wet, dry, dark, lightness. And in this case, Maria, what it is, is acceptance and change. Until there can be acceptance, there can be no change. Until there can complete acceptance, you're not ready to move toward change. Have you ever seen people ride with a flat tire or on the rims? Mm -hmm. And they just haven't accepted that that tire is flat. And it doesn't make it doesn't make easy going of life, does it? To ride on no. flat tires, does it? No, of course not. So this is this is the first step in twelve step recovery, and and if you'll notice, which uh, which step's the only one that deals with addiction, Becca? Um, one. Step one. That's the only one, and the other gets gets to work on yourself. Okay. So contrary to what the public gets portrayed in the media. Uh, Twelve-step recovery is about is about the individual. It's not about a particular addiction. Alcoholics Anonymous is not about stopping drinking. Narcotics Anonymous is not about stopping narcotics. Gamblers Anonymous is not stopping about about that. What what these responses are, what alcohol, what drugs, what gambling, whatever is interfering with your life, they're inappropriate responses to life situations. Mm -hmm. Inappropriate responses to life situations. So many times, Becca, what happens is that um, maybe you've heard this in the past, both of you, oh, if only Johnny would stop drinking, everything would be just fine. If Mary would stop using drugs, oh, her life would be just great. She'd win Nobel Prizes. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, however, the, what we have there is that is just the, the tip of the iceberg. So what we what we look at is we look at these type of things. We look at drinking. We look at drug taking. We look at gambling. We look at shoplifting. We look at uh, encountering sex. We look at comfort foods. We look at these things as behaviors. Do we not? They're behaviors. So what do we look at? What do we look at, Maria? We look at what's driving that behavior, do we not? Mm -hmm. So we do not we do not treat behaviors. We treat what's driving that behavior. So let's step on to uh, let's step on to step two. Uh, could you could you read step two for me, Becca, sure. please? Um, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Yes, yes. So what do you think of sanity, Maria? When it comes to sanity, what does uh, what does that mean to you? Um, just kind of being being able to go on with daily life in a you know reasonable manner. Mm -hmm. uh, are any of you aware that Albert Einstein came up with the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and mm -hmm. over again and expecting different results. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what Albert Einstein's definition of insanity: doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. However, in addiction, there's another definition, Maria. Okay, it's when you have that drink, that drug, that slot machine handle, uh, the comfort food in your hand. You know what's going to happen. You truly do. Okay. However, what do, what do we do anyway? Keep doing it. We go ahead and do it. And <laughs> what that is, that's addictive insanity, Becca. Addictive insanity. Have you ever asked somebody, why do you keep doing that? Why do you keep going back to that person? Why do you keep putting your hand on that hot stove? Okay. Why do you, if, if let's say that people, I'm sure that you've met people who have issues with alcohol. And or drugs. Okay, so if you ask that same person that if 
if whenever they ate a strawberry that they would grow horns. Would they eat strawberries? Unless they like horns. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, okay. However, it's remember that addiction is not only a physical addiction, it's a mental obsession. A mental obsession. So that's what we're dealing with. Uh, so we have to understand that came to believe that a power greater than ourselves. Words mean something, do they not? Indeed they do, right? Have you ever heard the saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, words will never hurt me? Yes. Well, that's absolute nonsense, of course, mm -hmm. because you two are physician assistants. You'll be mending broken bones, won't you? Mm -hmm. You'll be healing wounds, will you not? Yes. Right. And words, words last forever, do they not? Mm -hmm. And quite often we could be more, a little bit more mindful on how we choose our words, could right. we not? You mm -hmm. bet. Absolutely. So came to believe. Came to believe doesn't mean that you, uh, you sign an affidavit that you accept spirituality into your life. You came to believe. It's an educational experience. It's a journey. It's a process. It's not an event. A power greater than ourselves. What does that mean to you? Um, you know, believing in God or believing in something higher than yourself. Sure. Sure. How about you, Maria? What is a power greater than yourself? Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I agree with Becca. It's just something that you think is above you that can kind of help you in daily life. Absolutely. So what we're looking at is to connect. We're looking at to connect the divine within us, the light within us, connects with, with the light giver, okay? Mm -hmm. Whatever that may be. So believe, right? Believe. Uh, do you believe in leprechauns? <laughs> Not really. Okay. Becca? No. Okay. Do you believe in flying monkeys? No. Okay. <laughs> you know, although it's in Wizard of Oz. So <laughs> the idea here that you can believe in anything, okay? And I do know people that believe in leprechauns, and that's fine. I've never seen a leprechaun. I have an open mind. However, what does that have to do in my life? And then you move from belief to faith. Belief to faith, Maria. And Becca, all faith is is belief in something that you don't understand. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Okay? That's all it is. And so many, many people have a quantity a stretch, a difficulty in coming to the concept that there may be something greater than themselves, okay? That, that maybe binds us all together, okay? So let's take this table, okay? Hard, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's hard. Do you believe that this is made up of a swirling mass of electrons? Um, yeah. Yeah, why? <laughs> How come? Because it's a solid. Can you see them? No. Okay. Okay, so in, the tw so in the scientific world, Becca, what makes, what makes an experiment valid? Whether it's observable, measurable, and repeatable, right? So can you say that about spirituality? Can you say that about a higher power, measurable, observable, no. repeatable? No, of course not. However, you have perfect acceptance that this thing is made, this is made up of whirling, whirling electrons, mm -hmm. right? Protons, neutrons, molecules, atoms, right? This mm -hmm. is made up of. And you can't see them, can you? Yet, yet you accept that as fact, do you not? Mm -hmm. Why? How come? Because um, it's what we've been taught that's, in school. And that's what you've been taught in school, mm -hmm. correctly. So, and so with a say faith, it's kind of it's light in here, is it not? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of light. So, what's giving these light? What the, and what what makes the light? What makes the light? What makes those things glow, Maria? Electricity. Electricity. Now, I don't know. I know little or nothing about electricity. Mm -hmm. I have no idea where it comes from. I have an idea about it. it gets here. All I know that it's dangerous. Okay. However, I have faith, I have faith, Becca, that if you went over and flipped the light switch, that they'd go off. Okay. So really, what was that, what does that have an effect in my life? So what we do is we move from faith to faith in action, the action and effort part of it. All right. So the thing that I always illustrate this with is a lottery story. Correct? Have you heard that? Mm -hmm. you tell that? Have you heard me tell the lottery story, yes. Maria? Yes, well, I'm going to tell it once again to everyone out there listening. There was a person who prayed to win the lottery every day. <clears throat> Sweat blood, all right? So they went on and on and on every day, aggravating, praying very, very hard, and nothing ever happened. So they ran outside one day. They got so angry that they ran outside one day, and they screamed up at this guy. They said, God, why won't you let me win the lottery? And God called back down and said, could you meet me halfway and at least buy a ticket? So the idea is that quite often we expect things to happen to us, right? Mm -hmm. yes. we, we expect good things to happen to us, right? Just mm -hmm. by merely existing. However, it's buying the ticket. And here at Seclair, what we ask people is, is to buy the ticket. Put some action and effort in their lives, okay? The universe, the creator, the energy, whatever you want to call it, will do their part. However, we have to do ours. Right. Do we not? And we can't handcuff ourselves and drag them across the goal line. 
okay so this action action and effort action and effort and remember it is came to believe came to believe it's an educational experience and it's a journey that I hope you're all on so step number three could you uh, read that please Maria made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him as we understood him as we understood him and we have to remember Becca that these steps were written back in 1935 Okay, and these particular the first six steps were a member of, were, uh, by the Oxford group, which preceded uh, the first twelve step uh, group, which was Alcoholics Anonymous. So, as we understood him, so no one is giving you a preconceived notion or a dogma or how what you have to believe in. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Or have you have to have in your life? So, this is something spirituality is something that you form. Spirituality is a very, very, very personal thing. So came, so made a decision, made a decision. So this, these, these first three steps in twelve-step recovery are called commitment steps. Okay, this is where you get you get involved in a program. So came, came to believe. So made a decision. Excuse me, made a decision. So you make a decision to buy a house. Okay, have you bought the house? No. Nope. No. Mm -hmm. What? There are many. There are many little activities many hoops to jump through when you buy a home is there not yes you have to get a mortgage mm -hmm. you have to do a title search mm -hmm. you have to search around to buy the proper home that you want and get the one that you can afford you have to think about getting furniture you have, you have a lot of things to do don't you and that's action and effort is it not mm -hmm. you just don't say i'm going to buy a house and move into the one do you no. <laughs> no you don't so the idea is it's the action and the effort to prepare you to make a decision You've heard uh, the old one, and there's three frogs on a log, and there's th and they and they all made a decision to jump. Mm -hmm. How many log? How many frogs are on a log? Three. Three, all of them, because all they did was make a decision. Okay. Mm -hmm. However, making decisions is an incredibly important part. It's where you set the intention. Mm -hmm. It's where you set your attention, intention to uh, turn your will and your life, which which means that you're not going to be a robot. Okay. That just means that in many parts of your life you're going to turn turn things over to a higher power okay and this is where the mindfulness comes from this is where it talks about staying in the present staying in the present and aware paying attention on purpose in your life as when we're present and aware it's when the creator the divine whatever you want to call it puts people places things circumstances events in our life that if we are there to see them then they have some meaning for us right so what this what this it is is made a decision to turn our will and our lives over the, what that means is that we're we're channeling channeling our focus and our efforts we're not we're not diffusing them okay into our recovery not only to help ourselves maria to help others too mm -hmm. and that's and that's that's the message that's the message we want to carry so and if anyone has any further questions or comments uh, maria is going to let you know how to how to contact us any comment any criticism would be helpful all right to continue the conversation please like us on facebook or follow us on twitter under seclair life you can also find this and other grand rounds on youtube.com slash video and find audio versions on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. And please visit www.seclair.com for more about us and other articles on our great blog. And as always, we give a free prescription, do we not? Yep. At the end of every uh, podcast. Do you remember what that was? Fishing. Well, we uh, first we prescribe uh, fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Oh, yeah. Unplug your television and perhaps take up fishing. <laughs> and for a truly mindful experience, we fish without bait. We fish without bait. <laughs> and fishing without bait is living a lifetime without definitive expectations, mm -hmm. where, where we set ourselves up for disappointment, do we not? And, and when we fish without bait, we're open. We're turning certainties into possibilities, are we not? Yep. So my hope is, Becca, and this, will, this is your last uh, podcast with me. <laughs> yeah. So my hope is that you go out there and turn your life into possibilities. Thank That's you. truly my hope for you. Until next time, uh, you have your usual assignment is, of course, to be good to yourself. And another assignment today is to do a small kindness for another. Until we meet again, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.